Hey, what is up everybody? It is AJ here and in today's video, we can go through how to use Microsoft Forms for Business. Microsoft Forms for Business is an amazingly powerful tool that allows you to create surveys, quizzes, and polls where you can invite others into that form, whether they're on the web or on their device, and you can get real-time results to see what they've submitted. You can use the built-in analytics to evaluate those responses or export it into Excel for additional analysis. We're gonna look at Microsoft Forms for Business today because we're gonna go through some of the features only available to organizations with a Microsoft 365 subscription. These features are designed for organizations and it gives you things above and beyond what you get in the free version of Microsoft Forms for consumer. Of course, if you do like this video, let me know by giving a thumbs up and if you wanna supercharge the way as your computer, hit that subscribe button as well. With that being said, let's get into this. The easiest way to access Microsoft Forms is by going into the web browser and simply going to forms.microsoft.com and signing in with your work account. When you sign into Microsoft Forms, you're greeted with a page very similar to what's in front of us. And you can see we have two options where we can create a new response form or survey, or you can create an assessment like a quiz or a test. The quiz or test option is amazing for education, all the way from K to 12 and tertiary. And down the bottom, you have some more popular themes and templates to get started using Microsoft Forms. Microsoft keeps adding more and more to this, but what we're gonna do today is scroll up and not use a preset theme. We're gonna create a brand new form by simply selecting a new form. The first thing I wanna look at here is the layout of the web page, And of course, in the top left-hand corner, you can see the questions. And of course, we're gonna go through responses once we put the responses in as well. At the top, you actually have, because it's saved online, it's gonna keep saving automatically. And once we add a name for this form, we're gonna call it customer feedback form. Um, and then we're gonna add a little description down the bottom here. But you can see as soon as we put a name at the top, the name goes from form one to customer feedback form. And then this field here is gonna ask us to actually give a quick recommendation or a quick uh, summary of what this form is about. Um, please add in all your feedback about Aldo James Tech Tips. So if we're gonna click out of that for a second and we can see here this is called a customer feedback form and we wanna get all the feedback about my YouTube channel. And then down the bottom, because it knows we're creating a feedback form, it's already given us a range of different suggestions uh, of questions we can use. You can see here with the little plus button, we can add a new question and you have the option of a choice, multiple choice that is, a text response, which can be question and answer. They can have long uh, format or short format responses. A rating, so you can give it a star level. You can go up to 10 with these and you can choose whether it's a star, a number, a heart. Uh, of course, you can get a date if you wanna get the uh, input date for, uh, for the form. I don't wanna have the question here, so I'm quickly gonna open that and go delete, and delete on that one there. So you can see it's quite easy to, uh, to use. If we drop this arrow down, we can also add a ranking, a like it. We could upload a file, we could create a net promoter score section, and we can actually add brand new sections to this as well. So to start our form here, we're gonna first look at a choice, and the question is gonna be, I'm gonna grab one of the recommended and then edit here. How likely would you recommend our product to a friend or a colleague. Let's select on this one here. I'm gonna add selected, and then it's automatically given us a star level. But instead of keeping it as a generic, how likely would you recommend our product? I'm gonna select on it, and I'm gonna change it to how likely would you recommend Aldo James Tech Tips to a friend or a colleague. And then one star is not likely, and 10 stars is extremely likely. If I wanna make sure that they have to respond to this question, I'm gonna simply select on the required box here, and that means it's gonna get a little asterisk next to it saying that they need to respond to this question to submit the form. Uh, maybe the next question is going to be a multiple choice, but instead of using the recommended, I'm gonna actually select on choice myself. Uh, here, I wanna know if you are already subscribed to my channel, And then of course you can say option yes, no, and maybe we're gonna add another option, thinking about it. You can of course add photos and pictures here. This is gonna use OneDrive, or you can do a Bing image search to add some photos here. Let's see what pops up when I actually search my name. 
I don't know. None of these are me, but we've got uh, Dana White for some reason. Uh, so we're not going to add a photo in right now, but if you want to upload a photo, you definitely could. Um, you can also have the option of giving multiple answers here. So they might be able to say yes and thinking about it. Um, you can limit the number of options they have, but for this one here, we're not going to add a limit to it. And then I'm just going to add one more question. This time here, we're going to choose a text box. What kind of content? And after you put the question in, you can allow them to have a short answer, or if you wanna give them more time and more characters, we can select a long answer. So they just have a bigger text box here. I'm gonna go add new, and now I'm gonna drop this down, and I'm actually gonna create a brand new section. So you can see here we now have section one that we can put a title through, uh, and we're gonna call this um, general feedback. And then down the bottom here, we might be a bit more specific. So we can call this content feedback. Um, here's a place, and then we can go ahead and we can add new, or we can use the lightning button here, which is gonna bring up those question suggestions again, and we can scroll down and add these to it. Um, I'd recommend you have a play around with these and add as many questions as you can. One tip I would give you is to not make your quiz longer than it needs to be. So make it just long enough that it gives you as much information from your attendees and your recipients without making it such a long quiz for them. What we're gonna do now is learn how to customize the theme of our, um, our form here. So in the top right hand corner, you can see we have a preview. And if we select on preview, this is gonna show us what it looks like for an attendee or someone that's responding to the form. So it says, hi, Alan, when you submit this form, the owner is gonna see your name and email address. I'll tell you what that means in a second. Um, and then of course we can go through and we can choose how likely we are to recommend the channel. Are we already subscribed? Of course. And then we can add a long form answer here and simply go next. You can see the preview in both the computer, so what it looks like on the PC, or select on the mobile option, and this shows you what it looks like on a phone or a tablet. So it's really cool that it customizes it and it conforms to whatever screen you're working on. But let's hit back for now and continue customizing and editing our form. After preview, you have an option of style that allows you to add style and really add some custom customization to how the form looks. Uh, if we select on the view all option, this is gonna show us some themes that we can add to the form. And at the top here, there is an AI generated use, uh, which creates some customized styles specific for our form. So you can scroll through and maybe you like this one here with the animation to it. Um, I'd recommend having a play around and seeing what works best for you. Of course, you can choose to pause that live background or play if you think it looks really cool. And you also have the option now of adding background music. There's only a few options here, but I think it just makes filling out your form that much easier when there's a little bit of soft music in the background just playing away. Or if you choose the Just the Sun option, that's a bit more upbeat and maybe it's gonna push people to fill out that form a little bit faster. Of course, it's a great time to remind you guys, if you do like these videos, let me know by giving a thumbs up. And of course, you're gonna supercharge the way your computer, hit that subscribe button as well. We've gone through the preview, we've gone through the style, and we're pretty good with our form right now. Now we're gonna look at how we can actually get our responses from our organization and from people externally as well. So we can simply select on the collect responses option, and this has some really powerful stuff to it. So this is how we're gonna send and collect responses. On the right hand side here, you can actually have it as a URL that you can copy. But you can even go shorten URL and it's gonna make it a short URL to make it simpler to copy and paste. You can choose to send it as an invitation, which is really cool because then you can send it via Outlook or as a Teams message. So you've got the integration to your, um, your other M365 services. What I think is really handy is creating a QR code because then you can download this and print it out and maybe post it around the office or hand it out to people. And if you have a website, you can even embed the form in that website. So here are the four different ways of actually sending out 
uh, the collection and responses to your form, and it covers pretty much the most standard ways of collecting information. On the left-hand side, you can actually choose who can respond to your form. So if you go, anybody can respond, that means anonymous people can respond. So this is great if you're sending it to participants of an event, but they don't work for your organization, or if you're wanting to get mass responses. The second option is only people in my organization can respond. And that means they need to sign into their account before they can access the, um, the form. And then you can choose to record the name. If you choose to record the name, as I showed before, when they sign into the form, it already has their details here. So it says, hi, Alan, because it knows that Alan has signed in. So it's quite cool to already collect the person's information, it just makes it easier and one less thing for them to fill out. But let's go back into collect responses. You can choose to record name or not, you can make it anonymous and you can choose if you have this option turned on, you can have one response per person or you can allow them to have multiple responses. Third option you have here is of course, choosing specific people in your organization to respond. In this way, you can only have specific people in your organization and you could have either a group name for a teams or you could add them by individual name or by their email addresses. But you have so many different ways of sending and collecting responses here. Let me know your favorite in the comment section down below because I'm curious to know what you would use and why. The present option is a new feature in Microsoft Forms and I think it is really cool when you are presenting to large groups of people. So if we select on present now, you're gonna see this actually blows the form up into a much bigger, um, easy to use scale. It's got the QR code on the side and you can use the arrows down the bottom to jump between the different sections here. So this is a great way of showing people what your form looks like. And I'd use this at the start of any sort of presentation by saying, hey, we're gonna send you this feedback form, scan the QR code on the right hand side, and then you can use this time to present and walk them through what the responses look like. But I'm gonna X out of that. It's gonna bring us back into our form. And now we're gonna look at how we can collaborate with people on this form. So if you're working in an organization, you're most likely working with other people, especially if you're collecting feedback forms. On the right hand side, we're gonna select on the ellipses, which are the three dots, and this is gonna take us to more form settings. Here, the top option is collaboration or duplication. The collaboration option is great because it allows you to share the link to this form with people you wanna collaborate with. Maybe you're a team and you want other people to add their questions, you want them to view the responses. You just want them to work on this form with you. You can simply select on share the link to collaborate and view results. And then you can copy the link and then you can send it off to anybody. It could be in a Teams chat, could be in an email. Just send them the link. If you drop down the option here though, you can also choose who can access and collaborate with you. So the top one could be anyone with a 365 work or school account. So that allows you to collaborate with external people, not just people in your organization. The second option is people only within your organization, but that's anybody. So if you have a big organization, you might wanna turn this off, or you can choose specific people. I often use the specific people, that way I can actually choose who those people are because they're probably my closest teammates and they're the ones I want having access to edit and view their responses. If you've made an amazing form and you wanna share this with other people in your organization, but you don't want them to edit the form that you currently have, you can also choose to share the link and duplicate. And this is gonna give them a template of your form where they can use yours as a template, but build their own form afterwards. Cool, so let's now look at what the responses look like for this form. For this example, I've allowed anyone to access my form and I'm gonna act like I'm just an attendee to an event and I'm just gonna paste the form link into my web browser and then this is what I'm greeted with. It's gonna tell me it's a customer feedback form, uh, it's gonna give me the date and the time and it's gonna tell me please add all your feedback in about Aldo James Tech Tips. So I'm gonna start now and then we're gonna be met with the form. How likely are you to recommend the Aldo's Tech Tips to a friend or colleague? Hopefully you all say extremely likely. Are you already subscribed to Aldo James Tech Tips? I am. And what kind of content do you wanna see from Aldo James? More Microsoft Office Tips. Simply hit next. And then it says you've submitted your form once you hit this submit button, or you can go back if you wanna go ahead and make any changes. Let's hit submit. Then it says thank you, your response was submitted. You can either choose to save the response 
or you could submit a second response here. So maybe you wanna go back and maybe you're sharing a computer with a few people and you wanna get the feedback form from a few different people. Now that we've gotten a few responses, let's jump back to our form here at forms.microsoft.com. And you can see here in the top left-hand corner, we have questions. So this is gonna allow us to edit the form or we can go to the, the responses. You can see here, we have a few options here that the form is still active. We have three responses and the average time for feedback is about 26 seconds. We can scroll down and Microsoft Forms already gives us the data in a really easy to digest format. How likely are you to recommend Aldo James Tech Tips? Well, that got an average score of nine out of 10, which is pretty good if you ask me. You can choose to look at more detail and this is gonna show you more information as to who wrote it if we're collecting names and what each individual response was. We can also see the score of are you already subscribed to Aldo James Tech Tips and it gives us relevant graphs next to it. We can see two here were subscribed, zero were no and one was thinking about it. And down the bottom, it's really cool because it shows you a few of the comments that people left. If you go more details, we can of course see all of the responses that they have given. If you wanted to analyze this data in more uh, detail, you can choose to either view the results on the left-hand side, and this is going to give you each individual response. So you can go through and see what people wrote, or you can go back to that form, go back to the responses, and then you can choose to open in Excel. If you select before, before we open in Excel though, I'll recommend selecting on the three dots here under the more options for responses, and you can choose to delete the responses if you wanted to, print them if you wanted a physical printed version, or you could share a summary link. So maybe you don't wanna give people access to the full form, but you just wanna share a summary of the responses. This option here is great for that. But for now, we're gonna select on open in Excel so we can get more granular with the customer form feedback. And you can see we're now in Excel. This has taken all the information from that form and it's just turned it into a table which allows us to do a lot more data manipulation here. Of course, this is a pretty small sample size, but you can see that it already tabulates the information for you. So if you had a wide range of data and you wanted to actually customize it yourself, you simply export it into Excel and then do with it what you want. The next thing we're gonna go through is how you can use Microsoft Forms in Microsoft Teams. I'm gonna jump over to our team site here and you can see I'm in a channel. If I wanted to get a response from people in this channel about a form, I could copy and paste that form here. Hey guys, can you please fill out this form when you have a moment? And then simply hit send. And this is a great way of sharing a form with people that you've already created. You just drop it into a team site and people can start working with it. But that requires you to have made the form previously. But you can also, let's jump to a different team site. You can also create forms directly in Microsoft Teams. I'm gonna be in our sales and marketing team. I'm gonna go create a new conversation. And then I'm going to select down the bottom here. We have all the options like GIFs, emojis, attachments. I'm gonna select on the three dots, the ellipses here, and then look at some of the suggested applications. If forms isn't there, you can simply type and search for forms. And then you can find Microsoft Forms right here, right within Teams. We're gonna select on form. And this is gonna allow us to create a quick meeting poll within Microsoft Teams. This isn't as many options as what you get in the forms.microsoft.com, but this is a great way to run a poll directly within Microsoft Teams. You can see here, you can start adding questions, say, who's king? And you can go ahead and you can add multiple choice questions here, um, but this only allows you to create one quick form. You can't actually have multiple uh, different sections within Microsoft Teams. So this is just to quickly grab a form uh, and a multiple choice for, for your team members. You can choose on multiple options or you can only allow them to select one. I'm gonna get rid of this last option here by going to delete. And then down the bottom, you can choose to share the results with everybody else in your team. And you can choose to record the names of the respondents if you wanted to, but I'm gonna leave that turned off. If you're happy with your questions here, simply go preview. If you're happy with how it looks, 
go send, and then it drops a card straight in to Microsoft Teams where you can quickly grab a poll with your team members. And there you guys have it. It is that easy to use Microsoft Forms for business. Of course, if you guys did like this video, let me know by giving a thumbs up. If you want to supercharge the ways your computer, hit that subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.